When bulls go bananas, you never want to turn your back on a bull. That's what New York farmer Hugh Henderson says. Henderson has a point. Each year farmers are killed and their bulls go wild without warning. No one knows why bulls do this. They may be perfectly quiet one minute, but they may try to kill you the next. You just can't trust them, says Henderson. I think it's just their nature. Most farmers have no problem with their bulls, but when a bull does act up, it means trouble. Just ask the Mills family of Michigan. March 3, 2002. 13-year-old Andrew Mills was working on the family farm. Suddenly, a bull came after him. It knocked him off his feet. He was not badly hurt. But the bull then attacked his father, Mark. The bull knocked Mark to the ground. It stepped on him. Bulls weigh about 1,500 pounds. They can kill people just by standing on them. 15-year-old Kate Mills saw what was happening. She knew the bull would kill her father unless she acted quickly. Jumping on the tractor, Kate drove straight toward the bull. After she hit the bull on its side, it moved away from her father. Andrew picked up a board that was lying nearby. He waved it at the bull. Together, Kate and Andrew held off the bull as best they could. Two rescue workers came, but they could not get to Mark. The bull was in their way. They sent out a call. They asked for help from anyone from anywhere. More people came. These people chased the bull off so the rescue workers could get to Mark. Mark was rushed to the hospital. He was in bad shape, but thanks to his children, he was alive. The Mills family did not have any warning their bull would attack. Neither did New Zealand farmer Bruce Destro. One day, Destro wanted to do some work on a fence. He got some wood and carried it across a field. Destro kept a bull in the field, but that didn't worry him. The bull had never been a problem. In fact, Destro thought of it as a pet. On this day, however, the bull was not feeling friendly. It came up behind Destro. The bull knocked him to the ground. It dug into him with its horns. It lifted his head and tossed him into the air. Some of Dusto's workers ran to get help. By then it was too late. Dusto died in the field. Sometimes bulls do give signals that they are ready to snap. British farmer David Mightum got a signal. He and his wife Susan thought their bull was safe to be around. Often they went to the field and petted it. They let their children do the same. On July 9, 2002, the bull seemed angry. When David came out to it, it knocked him down. Susan was nearby. She saw David curled up on the ground near the bull. She ran over. She hit the bull with a stick until it moved away. David was not badly hurt. The Mitems knew they could no longer trust their bull. They made plans to get rid of it. David said that he would carry a stick with him until the bull was gone. Just two days later, though, he forgot. When he went into the field, he did not take a stick. His hands were empty. Again, the bull attacked him. This time, Susan was not there to save him. The bull killed him. Vermont farmer Floyd Stone did not have as much warning as David might have. In fact, he did not really have a warning at all. He did have a funny feeling. That was what he called it. Stone went to the barn one morning. He planned to move his bull out to a field. He took hold of the ring in its nose and began to lead it out the barn door. Stone had owned this bull for years. It had never given him any trouble. On this day, Stone sensed something was not right, so before he left the barn, he grabbed a pitchfork. A pitchfork is a tool that looks like a big fork. Farmers use it to throw hay or to break ground. Taking the pitchfork saved Stone's life. Once outside, the bull suddenly went wild. It shook his head back and forth. Stone lost his grip on the nose ring. The bull then charged at Stone and knocked him down. It hit him with his horns and kicked at him with his feet. Luckily, a neighbor passed by at just this moment. The man saw Stone on the ground. He also saw the pitchfork, which Stone had dropped. The neighbor grabbed the pitchfork and used it to drive the bull away. Stone lived through the attack. Like David Mightum, he said he would never trust a bull again. But while Mightum soon forgot his words, Floyd Stone has always remembered. From that day on, he has carried a stick or pitchfork whenever he has gone near a bull.